transgender MMA fighter has said she wants a license to fight in California. A biological male has just become the first transgender person to win a world title in cycling. First transgender weightlifter winning her maiden international event as a woman. A biological male winning a gold medal in a women's event now seems a matter of when, not if. Since sports events began, men and women have been segregated by gender to make the competitive events fairer due to differences in muscle mass, innate strength or testosterone levels. But nowadays these physical differences no longer seem to be a determining factor. There are all kinds of reasons that people have advantages. Somebody's parents can give them year-round training. Somebody else is really, really tall and someone's really, really short. Sport has never been fair. You bought into that myth, so have a lot of other people. But let's face it, if I wanted to be a jockey, I couldn't be. Nature endows her gifts unevenly in society. It's true that some physical characteristics give athletes an unusual advantage in sports like Michael Phelps' long arms, or Usain Bolt's height. But the genetic difference of being born as a male or female and competing with the opposite gender proved to be more of a determining factor than any bodily developments in sports. If you go through puberty, you have all the benefits of having a male body. And even if you transition and reduce your testosterone, you're still going to have those benefits. You're going to have the, the bone structure, the slightly bigger heart, more red blood cells. So therefore, a female athlete competing against a transgender a female is always going to be at a disadvantage. Testosterone levels are important because the amount of the hormone defines the eligibility of athletes to compete whenever sporting events are limited to a single sex, following IAAF rulings. The idea that we need to protect women's or female sport from other women and females is itself inherently discriminatory. No testosterone policy will ever work. Male to female athletes no longer need to have reassignment surgery, but they do need to demonstrate that their testosterone levels have been below 10 nanomol per litre for at least one year, according to the 2016 International Olympic Committee guidelines. It's not saying you're a man or a woman. It's saying you can compete. It's a, a, a matter of eligibility to participate in certain competitions. In the case of female to male athletes, they can compete without restrictions. The 10 nanomoles per litre, as I understand it, something like 90% of female athletes, their testosterone levels are around 3 nanomoles per litre. So in other, in other words, this upper limit is three times what would be typical in a female athlete. So it seems like a kind of arbitrary uh, setting unrelated to the realities of the situation. Well, I actually agree with you there. But what happens with student athletes who decide to change their gender? Well, the rules are not clear at all. Most countries don't have clear regulations. And the biggest student sports organization in the US, the NCAA, does not require gender confirmation or a legal recognition of a player's transition sex in order for transgender players to participate on a team that matches their identity. At least one year of hormone treatment prior to competing on a female team. In the middle of all this legal mess, Zuby, a UK-based rapper, basically identified as a female and broke British women's weightlifting records. Saying, look, I'm not a professional powerlifter, but even I myself, I can walk, I can stroll into the gym on any given day and I can break the British women's bench press record. I can break the British women's deadlift record. When I'm on form, I could potentially break the British female squat record. And I'm not, a, I don't even compete. So if you're a woman, 
and you're a natural woman and you don't take any extra hormones or male hormones, you're not taking steroids or any sort of performance enhancing drugs, you're doing your very best to compete and you're at the top of the heap. But then someone comes along that was a man for 30 years and decides that they're going to be a woman and this has happened and literally transitioned a few months ago and competes as a woman and destroys records and dominates you in that sport. That's bullshit.